Imagine a chemical so insidious that it now courses through the blood of nearly every person on Earth. This forever chemical, perfluorooctanoic acid, or C8, lurks within. A silent intruder, capable of triggering cancer, birth defects, and a host of other devastating health effects. It's not an abstract threat. It's a reality that touches us all. A toxic legacy of one of the most egregious corporate cover-ups in history. But this isn't just a story of betrayal, it's also a story of resistance, of ordinary people rising up against impossible odds. It's a story that, like the C8 in our veins, is woven into the fabric of our lives, whether we recognize it or not. The echoes of this story will resonate for generations. To understand the true scale of this tragedy, we must go back to the beginning, when DuPont was more than just a company. It was a symbol of American progress. But as you'll soon discover, beneath this facade of innovation lay seeds of greed that would grow into a global crisis. Our story begins over 200 years ago on the banks of Delaware's Brandywine River. Here, a French immigrant named Eruteri René Dupont founded a humble gunpowder mill that would grow into one of America's most iconic corporations. Over the decades, Dupont became synonymous with progress, transforming entire industries from automobiles to agriculture. By the early 20th century, Dupont had become a chemical powerhouse, pioneering innovations that changed the world. Nylon, the first synthetic fiber, revolutionized fashion. Kevlar, a material five times stronger than steel, saved countless lives. Dupont was at the forefront of human achievement, even contributing to the Manhattan Project during World War II. Yet even as Dupont shaped the future, it sowed the seeds of a darker legacy. By the 1950s, whispers of environmental and health concerns began to surface. But these whispers were silenced by the company, by regulators, by a system that placed profit above precaution. One of the most significant of these concerns was Teflon, a product that promised convenience with its miraculous non-stick properties. But the magic behind Teflon was a chemical called perfluorooctanoic acid, or C8. C8 was critical to Teflon's production, but it was also toxic, persistent, and potent. As Teflon brought in billions, DuPont's scientists began to uncover a terrifying truth. C8 was far more dangerous than they had imagined. Studies conducted in the 1960s and 1970s revealed that C8 did not break down in the environment or in the human body. It could linger in our bloodstreams for decades, quietly wrecking havoc, causing cancer, liver damage, and developmental issues in children. DuPont's leadership faced a choice, protect the public or protect their profits. They chose the latter. The evidence was buried, the dangers downplayed, and the profits kept flowing. In their pursuit of wealth, they had set a toxic time bomb, one that would not only explode in their faces, but also seep into the very essence of our world. But this was just the beginning. As the years passed, the consequences of this decision would begin to surface, not just in boardrooms and laboratories, but on the quiet hillsides of West Virginia. Wilbur Tennant's farm, nestled in the rolling hills of Parkersburg, West Virginia, was a testament to the American dream. The green pastures, the clear streams, the contented cattle, it was a picture of rural prosperity. But in the 1980s, that picture began to change. Tenants' cows started dying, their bodies twisted by illness. Their organs bloated, their teeth blackened, their once vibrant coats dulled by a mysterious malady. Tennant knew his farm, knew his animals. This was no natural disease. His suspicions fell on the creek that ran through his land, once a source of life, now dark and foul-smelling. The plants along its banks wilted, the air around it heavy with an acrid stench, and upstream, like a fortress on the hill, stood the DuPont plant, where C8 flowed like water. But when Tennant tried to sound the alarm, he was met with silence. The authorities dismissed him, his neighbors avoided him, the man who had once been the heart of his community was now an outcast, shunned for daring to challenge the giant that fed the town. 
In his desperation, Tennant turned to Rob Billot, an environmental lawyer from Cincinnati who had spent his career defending companies like DuPont. Billot had no reason to take Tennant's case. It was outside his expertise, a direct threat to his career. But Billot's grandmother lived near Tennant's farm, and she had heard the whispers of what was happening. At her urging, Billot agreed to meet Tennant, expecting nothing more than a polite conversation. But as Tennant laid out his evidence, something shifted in Billot. The photographs of dead cattle, the poisoned water, the despair in Tennant's eyes, it was undeniable. This wasn't just a legal case, it was a moral imperative. Billot couldn't turn away. Late at night, as the world slept, Billot pored over documents, piecing together a story that DuPont had spent decades trying to erase. Tennant's dying cattle were just the beginning, a harbinger of a catastrophe that would soon engulf the entire community. At the heart of it all was C8, a chemical so dangerous it had no place in the world. Yet, yet it was everywhere, and soon, this quiet battle would erupt into a full-blown war. With a mountain of evidence in hand, Rob Billot did the unthinkable. He sued DuPont, the very company he had once defended. This was no ordinary lawsuit, it was a David and Goliath battle, with a small-town lawyer going up against a corporate giant armed with limitless resources and the finest legal minds money could buy. Before we continue, if this story has you on the edge of your seat, click the bell icon below to turn on notifications. We dive deep into stories like this regularly, and you won't want to miss what's next. The courtroom became a battlefield. Every word, every piece of evidence was a strike in a war of attrition. DuPont's lawyers, dressed in immaculate suits, their faces masks of confidence, were formidable. But Billot, with his relentless determination and a stack of damning documents, had something they didn't. Truth. As the trial unfolded, Billot exposed a web of lies and deception that spanned decades. Internal DuPont documents revealed that the company had known about the dangers of C8 since the 1960s. Their own scientists had raised alarms, but instead of acting, DuPont's executives had conspired to keep the information hidden. Memos were uncovered, discussing how to suppress research, how to mislead the public, how to protect profits at any cost. But the cover-up was about to unravel. Billot's investigation revealed that C8 had seeped far beyond the confines of Tennant's farm. It had leached into the groundwater, spread through the air, contaminated the soil. Tens of thousands of people across the Ohio River Valley were drinking poisoned water, their bodies slowly accumulating the chemical that DuPont had unleashed. The implications were staggering. Nearly every American, perhaps nearly every human on the planet, carried traces of C8 in their blood. It was a ticking time bomb, a legacy of greed that would haunt generations. Yet despite the overwhelming evidence, DuPont fought back with all its might. But Billot, he was undeterred, driven by a sense of justice that no amount of money or legal maneuvering could extinguish. The battle was far from over, and the stakes were higher than ever. As the truth about DuPont's actions came to light, the public's reaction was swift and furious. Media outlets picked up the story, and what had been a local scandal exploded into a national outrage. The idea that a trusted American company could knowingly poison its own citizens was unthinkable, yet it had happened. In 2004, faced with overwhelming evidence and public pressure, DuPont agreed to a landmark settlement. There is a $110 million settlement. Most of that money will now be used to correct problems stemming from a plant near Parkersburg. They would pay over $70 million to install water filtration systems in affected communities and fund a health study to monitor the long-term effects of C8 exposure. But this was only the beginning. The health study, known as the C8 Science Panel, was unprecedented. It involved over 69,000 participants and took nearly a decade to complete. The findings were devastating. 
C8 was linked to six serious diseases, including testicular and kidney cancer, thyroid disease, ulcerative colitis, high cholesterol, and pregnancy-induced hypertension. These findings confirmed what DuPont had known all along. C8 was a deadly chemical that had no place in our bodies or our environment. The impact of the C8 science panel's findings reverberated around the globe. Communities far beyond the borders of the United States began testing their water supplies, discovering that C8 contamination had spread to Europe, Asia, and beyond. The chemical that DuPont had unleashed had truly become a global threat. Armed with this new evidence, Billot filed a class action lawsuit against DuPont on behalf of tens of thousands of people exposed to C8. The lawsuit accused DuPont of negligence, fraud, and conspiracy to cover up the dangers of C8. It was one of the largest toxic tort cases in history, putting DuPont's entire business model on trial. In 2017, after nearly two decades of legal battles, DuPont agreed to pay over $670 million to settle more than 3,500 lawsuits related to C8 contamination. It was a staggering sum, but for many of the victims, it was too little, too late. By the time the truth came out, C8 had already contaminated the blood of 99% of Americans and countless people around the world. The chemical was linked to a range of devastating health effects, from testicular and kidney cancer to thyroid disease to pregnancy complications. But amidst the tragedy, a new chapter was beginning to unfold, one where communities, once silent, began to find their voice. The fight had sparked something bigger than itself, a movement for accountability, justice, and change. The DuPont scandal is more than just a corporate crime. It's a cautionary tale for our times. In an era of unchecked corporate power and lax government oversight, it's a stark reminder of what happens when profits are put ahead of people. But if there's one thing we've learned, it's that change is possible when ordinary people stand together. Before you go, if you're inspired by stories of perseverance and vision, make sure to click on the video about Hyundai's founder on the end screen. It's a remarkable story of how one man's relentless pursuit of a dream transformed a nation and the world of automobiles. Don't miss it. But beyond the screen, the story continues. We are all part of this narrative, bound by the same thread of humanity. As we grapple with the toxic legacy of C8 and other industrial pollutants, we face a choice. Will we continue to place blind faith in corporations that have shown time and again that they cannot be trusted to police themselves? Or will we demand real accountability, real transparency, and real change? The stakes could not be higher. The DuPont scandal may be one of the most egregious examples of corporate malfeasance in recent memory, but it is far from an isolated case. Every day, decisions are made in boardrooms that affect our health, our environment, and our very future. It's up to us to hold them accountable. It's up to us to demand better. It's up to us to build a world where people and the planet come before profits. The fight won't be easy, but as the brave men and women of Parkersburg have shown us, it's a fight we cannot afford to lose. Let the DuPont scandal be a wake-up call, a rallying cry for a better, safer, more just world. Let it be the spark that ignites a movement for real change. Because in the end, we're all in this together. We're all at risk, and we all have a part to play in writing the next chapter of this story. The choice is ours. The future is in our hands. Let's make it a future we can be proud of.